is Deanna Bailey with the Texas Blockchain Council, and I'm here with Erin Murphy from Topple. And hi, Erin. Hi. How hi. are you? Thanks I'm, so much. Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah, you too. How are you enjoying this amazing summit so far? Uh, it's been incredible. I'm new to Texas and fairly new to blockchain, so for me, this event is just it's just a really powerful time to meet people in the space and to um, to really see the thought processes behind this industry in Texas, which is really exciting. Yeah. It feels like I made the right move. Yeah, yeah. for sure, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like good aura everywhere. Yeah, totally. Good, people. totally. good vibes, good all conversations. Day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so you said new to the space. Yeah. What did you do before? Yeah, so I actually spent my career in development aid and development finance. So I worked with organizations like the United Nations, some of the really big players wow. in that space. Yeah. So most of my career overseas, actually, in Eastern Europe and in South Asia. And, um, and then I decided that I wanted to start a company. In 2017, I started a fair trade fashion company. And I was like, I don't know how to do a, a fashion company. I don't know how to really run a business. And so I went to business school and that's actually how I found Topple. Wow. Was, yeah. yeah, it's good for you. Yeah. It's, okay, so tell me about Topple. Like what, what made you gravitate to them? Yeah, so we are an impact focused blockchain. Um, and we we believe that impact can be tracked, traced, and tokenized. Yeah. And so that's what we're working on. That was what obviously kind of what appealed to me. I like this idea of an infrastructure or really like a new economy structured around what we would we consider is the best sort of infrastructure would be the the UN development goals. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so we look at the SDGs and we think, okay, so we know that carbon offsets can be tokenized and that there are other ways to monetize impact, but can't that be done for other types of impact? If you hire X percent of women or if you are um, you know using twenty percent less water or something like that. And yeah. so we believe that in these impact exchanges that are starting to grow across across Europe, across the states, really across the world, that these new types of impact credits can be traded, and that's what we're working on right now. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah, I'm real. I'm. It's like so it's such an honor to be a part of it. Yeah. Wait, okay, so you're saying so. There's another use case aside from just like regular crypto for blockchain. Yes, like imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, it, it's the same concept, right? Is that you have this. You have this asset that um, maybe isn't considered to be an asset in a traditional sense, or it's not a traditional financial asset, right? right? But it still adds value, and it still has an impact. It, you know, whether that value is, you know, a coffee farmer in Ethiopia who's earning more money, his income goes up, his daughter now goes to school, that's yeah. contributing yeah. to the Ethiopian economy, GDP is going up, right? There's growth that's happening, and so it's this idea that impact is is valuable, and you know. We see the business world recognizing that, right? We see that impact is, it's not just this like sexy term anymore. People are really starting to understand, hey, this matters and there's yeah. ways we can monetize it. Yeah. And so that's kind of our theory is, and our hypothesis and what we're betting on is that people will want to and um, will engage in monetizing that impact. Yeah, you know, I, I saw, I'm, I'm trying to think if it was a, a story that had happened or um, if it was just a concept, but at some point the UN was entertaining being able to use biometrics for right. refuge camps, yes. right? And then issuing digital payments and currency. Right. And just think about like from an audit level, the the how much more secure and how much easier that becomes by utilizing these technologies. Yeah, you've got this immutable record. I mean, you have a lot of, in, you know, this, we see this going on in Turkey or in Greece and these places that are kind of the forefront of the immigrant crises. And, right. you know, we don't even know who actually is a refugee or who is, you know, a, an internally displaced person because ID papers are lost. I mean, it's 2021. I mean, it's just—it's interesting to have this technology and to be able to start free thinking, like all the different things you can do with it. And I think it's especially motivating to see a woman like empowering it, right? And just so dedicated to making a change. I mean, I think being a woman is, I think this is our time right now. It's yeah. really exciting, but I, I agree. I mean, I think that's what appealed to me about the space, honestly, is, you know, I was headed for this really traditional industry um, where there, there definitely is a glass ceiling and where, yes, it's being shattered, it's at a very slow pace, but the, the something that was exciting to me about blockchain is, you know, this is a space where, you know, it's kind of the wild west or it seems like it right now, but there's there, there are people from all different walks of life, all different backgrounds kind of making their way in this industry. So that was definitely appealing, but also the, 
the real impact it will have for women, right? If, if you do have um, access to capital that, you know, which women traditionally haven't had access to, right? right? If you think right. about inheritance laws or, or even just education levels, right? This really opens a lot of doors. So yeah. being a woman is a huge part of, I think, um, you know, is a huge catalyst for for my interest in the industry, but also for my my empathy for for the users. Right. Yeah. So is your company Texas based? We are based in Houston. Um, I'm helping to open the the Austin operations, or so moving our product and core tech teams to, to Austin. I work on the product team. So nice. yeah, it's very exciting. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So How do been in Austin for a month. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. welcome to Austin. Are you <laughs> from you. Houston? Were you in Houston before? I'm actually not. I'm from oh. the Northeast. Oh, yeah, okay. so I'm one of those. Sorry. <laughs> I'm from Connecticut. Oh, me too. Oh no way. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Where? What part? I'm from Newtown. Oh, I was, so I was born in New London. Okay. And then I like, grew up near Mohegan Sun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. How funny. Small yeah. world. Small, small. My mom's from Waterbury. You're from Waterbury. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly yeah, where that is. That's so funny. Oh, so so how do you feel like I mean especially coming from the northeast, right? Because you have Boston right there with MIT and it's yep. kind of like a kind of a crypto blockchain capital. Yeah. Um, but now moving to Texas, I mean how do you feel like Texas is embracing this? Or or are they? I think it's really interesting because, you know, my my knowledge of the the Texas sort of tech space was kind of big tech. It was like, oh, I knew Google had a campus here, yeah. and, and like you know Tesla moving here and all this stuff. And and I knew that you know obviously even even at ONG considered me a more traditional sector, but still a lot of innovation happening, right? So I personally associated Texas with innovation, but I think not necessarily this. Like right. this has yeah. been awesome, and I, I think it makes a lot of sense just today hearing from. Senator Cruz from some of the other from some of the other speakers. Okay, thinking through this this ethos of Texas and this ethos of blockchain, I'm like, okay, like this makes sense. You know what I mean? It makes yeah. sense that Texas would embrace um, such a you know potentially you know we want to we want to keep it that way, but democratizing technology, yeah, um, e you know, equalizing level play like you know play field leveling technology. So uh, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I feel like it's been very welcoming as well. And yeah. I, mean, I mean, you could tell oh, this in this right? 100%, 100%, like, yeah. The, the level of um, intelligence and the conversations and the diverse everybody's background so of everybody nice. here. <laughs> everybody's so nice. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's great too, right? Northeast, not so much. Not so nice. Not so much. <laughs> yeah. like, it's, that's what I don't even call home anymore. I know, I remember like so much. starting up random <laughs> conversations with, like, with me. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. let's talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or it just starts off very offensive to begin with. Right, right. Like, it's just how we upgrade each other. <laughs> so funny, it's so oh, true. So coming up in your work, what are, you, what are you really excited about for the next few years? Like, okay, um, so much. Okay, I think one thing I'm really excited about, um, can I say two? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is your time so, to talk what you want. So we are working on a, um, we're working on two products that I'm really excited about. One is this agri specialty agricultural product and specialty commodity tracing application. And so, you know, my dad was an oil trader, um, also a coffee trader. I grew up with a lot of exposure to commodities and he was always really, um, careful about you know making it real like there's a lot of exploitation that goes on there's a lot yeah. of like yep. murky dirty parts of these supply chains right and blockchain has the power to bring transparency to these supply chains so right now we're actually kicking off um, you know our sort of beta research phase and we're working with some companies from all across the world wow. in coffee diamonds and these like specialty products that people customers want to know the stories of yep. and to me that's really exciting like I mentioned I had this background in in fashion, and so I have this interest in bringing the customer to, you know, to that little village in Nepal or in India or in, you know, Tanzania where they're producing this good. And I just think that this is a really powerful use of the technology. And the other one would be, it's a similar product that we're working on for companies, again, to, to track and transact and monetize their impact. And we're starting with carbon, which is, which is really exciting. So we're working with a lot of Texas-based companies who are actually kind of really interested in how can we help companies to trade this asset, right? Yeah. This is an asset. And yep. this is something that, you know, in Europe we're seeing really advanced sort of infrastructure around and in the States we're, we're getting there and we really just want to be a part of it. So yeah. yeah. That's I'm fantastic. excited. Yeah. You sound yeah. Excited. I'm excited for you. Well thank you. you. Really <laughs> yeah, it. thank you. I mean is there anything you want to leave our audience with before we go? Um, I think the only thing would be that, you know, the blockchain space is big. It's not all about Bitcoin, though that's an important part. Um, but there are a lot of impact applications, and it's it's really exciting. Um, and you should check us out. Check out Topple. Yeah, really awesome. happy to meet you. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the yeah, time. Yeah, thank you for having me. Appreciate it.